Then, his time is up. Exactly one year after being chosen, the man-god is taken to the steps of the sacrificial pyramid. Alone, he willingly mounts the steps, breaking his sacred flutes as he goes, to symbolize the end of his reign on Earth. Finally, he comes to the sacrificial altar. The priest cuts his heart out. The Chosen One has his body chopped into pieces, and then his flesh is reverently eaten by Aztec priests. The body and soul of the man-god now feeds the Aztec people. It's important to remember that Aztec cosmology, that worldview that said each of our bodies is a corporeal covering of a spirit when they're eating the body of this God-man victim. What they're doing is they're taking part of that into themselves. With that, the cycle of life can continue for another year. Man feeding the gods, the gods feeding man, all bound together by blood. My heart is a gift that I was given by the divinity that was deposited in me. And at some point in my life, in, in, in symbolic and real ways, I've got to give it back. And there's another benefit. Human sacrifice sends a message to your enemies. This is what happens when you mess with the Aztecs. They will bring their great warriors at you, and they will bring you to the great temple, and they will sacrifice you at the great temple as a way of feeding the sun. The arrival of the conquistadors finally broke that cycle of life and death. When they destroyed the Aztec Empire in 1521, they ended the sacrifices forever. But Europe had its own history of sacrifice, with rituals involving fertility, sacred sex, and brutal bloodshed. 300 BC. Long before Christianity arrived in Northern Europe, pagan tribes performed elaborate fertility rites. The rituals began with sex and ended in slaughter. The best evidence of these sacrifices is this remarkable corpse called Tolan Man discovered in a Danish swamp near the village of Toland. He died over 2,000 years ago, but his face and skin are perfectly preserved, as if he died yesterday. He is one of dozens of mysterious bog bodies. They are ancient preserved corpses found in the bogs of Ireland, England, and Scandinavia. The reason for Toland Man's death is unclear, but the method isn't. He'd been garroted or hanged, and after his hanging, he was placed almost reverently in a bog. Not much is known about the religion of these pagan Europeans, who left no written records. But from forensic evidence, scholars have pieced together startling aspects of their rituals. The most surprising thing about European human sacrifice is its connection with psychedelic drugs and, and some kind of sexual rites. Sex, drugs, and sacrifice. The evidence is found in the contents of Toland Man's stomach. His last meal was a thick porridge, which contained ergot, a powerful hallucinogen. Ergot is a fungus that grows on barley. Chemically, it's nearly identical to LSD and just as powerful. The poisonous hallucinogen not only created an altered state, new research shows that the drug ergot may actually be a deadly Iron Age form of Viagra. 
ergot could have an effect as an aphrodisiac. Current treatments for erectile dysfunction worked by constricting some of the blood vessels in the genitals, allowing them to be functional. Ergot could have a similar effect. According to the Roman writer Tacitus, the bog bodies of Europe all may be connected by a single fertility ritual, combining sex, drugs, and bloodshed. The ritual revolves around the male fertility god Freyr mating with the earth goddess Nerthus. Their sexual union in myth is recreated in ritual. 300 BC, Tolan, Denmark. A young man is taken to the secret woods of Nerthus, the fertility goddess. It's a sacred site dedicated to sexual rituals. The man is met by a beautiful young priestess. She plays the role of the goddess of sexuality. The man is given a powerful hallucinogenic brew. The victim is encouraged to sit in a sacred posture. The posture is seen again and again in Celtic artwork. It seems to be um, part of a ritual in which someone playing the fertility god is seated and a priestess or someone playing the role of the goddess um, copulates with him by straddling him. Just at the peak of sexual excitement, he is strangled, beaten and slashed. Instead of ecstasy, he tastes death. The body is drained of its most fertile fluids. Then it is flung into a bog, lying hidden, perfectly preserved with its wounds, until it emerges in our day. But there's a mystery here. Nearly all the bog bodies have marks of ritual murder. Was the bog itself part of the ritual? And if so, what does the bog do that burial in the ground would not do? To find out, our team created a tabletop bog from pure peat moss, reconstituted into a swampy mixture. The victims, chicken carcasses fresh from the butcher. The question is, does a bog naturally preserve flesh? Our team has assembled this tabletop bog in which they've placed in here two chicken carcasses approximately eight weeks ago. Can you imagine a chicken carcass right here for eight weeks? All that would be left would be goo, bones, and a really bad smell. So let's see how these guys are doing. This is really amazing. I have an intact chicken. Other than being covered with water and peat moss and being a little bit darker than perhaps in the supermarket, this actually is preserved. After eight weeks, the chickens show no sign of decay. Ancient peat bogs prove to be efficient preservatives. Chemical analysis has shown that sphagnum moss or peat moss is highly acidic. It's so acidic it actually kills oxygen-loving bacteria, creating, in effect, a kind of watery vacuum. This shows us that the Celts knew what they were doing when they placed these bodies in the bogs. They were obviously, purposely trying to preserve these bodies for the future for some reason. The reasons for this are unclear, but some scholars suggest the bodies were preserved to be pulled out of the bog later, to join the tribe for special occasions. You look back into Neolithic times and you find that the remains of the dead are taken out of communal tombs and are perhaps um, used in rituals or taken to feasts. Um, that's like inviting your ancestors to tea, I suppose. But it, this thing continues right through the Bronze Age into the Iron Age. Some scholars believe these bog bodies may have been messengers to the gods, grotesque dinner guests at the feast 
who then took prayers for fertility and a good harvest back to the gods. Bodies like Tolan Man were then placed in the bogs once again to appear more than 2,000 years later in our own time. Further west, Celtic gods of rain demanded a more violent offering in the flaming spectacle called the Wicker Man. In 1984, an ancient body re-emerges from the depths of the Lindo Moss Peat Bog in northern England. He appears from the state of his body to have been of high status. His body was painted, he was well nourished, his fingernails were in excellent condition, and his beard had been neatly trimmed. He is a 2,000-year-old victim of human sacrifice. Forensic evidence shows he was not just any victim. The body of Lindo Man doesn't have the muscular development of a farmer or a warrior. He may have been a priest, an offering from a sacred brotherhood of one of their own. The gods don't want your trash. They don't want the village idiot. You have to sacrifice the most valuable people. You want the proudest, most noble, most educated, most capable people. Those are the people that the gods want to see. Northern England, 50 AD. This young man is about to be sacrificed in a ritual known as the Triple Death. The horror begins when a noose is flung around his neck. He is brutally hammered with a thick club. He feels a razor-sharp blade across his neck. The spray of blood is a sign that the gods are pleased. The body is flung into a bog, sinking slowly into its dark depth. A gruesome evidence of bloodshed preserved for 2,000 years. The reason for his death is mysterious, but the bloody wounds of Lindo Man suggest a link with a mysterious European priesthood based on human sacrifice. The Druids. Druids were the priests of the Celtic people. The Celts were an Iron Age tribe that stretched across Europe from the Swiss Alps to the far shores of Ireland. Little is known about the Druids. They did no writing. They left no records. The Roman writer Lucan reported the Druids worshipped three bloodthirsty fertility gods. And Lindo Man may have been offered to all three. Tutatis, god of the tribe, asked for victims to be strangled. Tyrannus, the god of thunder and rain, demanded that a victim be killed by battering or burning. And Essus, god of the crops, wanted his victims stabbed. The body of Lindo Man is grisly evidence of the triple death. But the Druids didn't just kill their own. Fifty-five B.C. While Julius Caesar and his armies are invading the British Isles, in the north of England, a captured warrior from a rival Celtic tribe is dragged before a chanting Druid coven. He is about to become a living offering to Tyrannus, god of thunder and rain. This is the Wicker Man. 